Generation STEM is brought to you thanks to the help from the National Science Foundation and its collaborative association with the Center for Games and Impact, VEME, Eline Media, Haku, and Arizona State University. Today, in Generation STEM, a biologist shares her passion for science and a message for the conservation of plants and animals for our planet's future. We'll meet a student who wants to study medicine to be an obstetrician to welcome newborns to this world and make them feel at home. Ever since she was a little girl, she knew her future was in medicine. And today she is a doctor who helps a lot of people in medical missions all over the world. She was never interested in science, but a teacher made a twist in her life, and she ended up being passionate for human anatomy. All of this today in Generation STEM. I'm Gabriel Salgado and I'm back with you again for another episode of Generation STEM. We want you to join us in a journey around careers in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, or STEM. As we get to know many students and professionals who have paved their future in these careers, we want to share with you their experiences. Today we are going to start with biology, the science that studies the origin or evolution of living beings. There are two branches, botany which studies plants and zoology which studies animals. Today we have the story of Catalina Vasquez, a young Colombian girl who is getting a doctorate in biological sciences and is going to show us the universe of opportunities her profession has given her. My name is Catalina Vasquez Carrillo. I am a fourth year PhD student at the University of Miami. Um, my major, the things that I'm doing are related to biological sciences. I'm mostly working in um, marine and coastal ecology and working with endangered species. To be able to come and like work and like study in the U.S., navigating the system, getting the requirements to be here took a, took a little bit of time. Um, one big issue is to be able to dominate the language, the second language. Another um, important aspect is that you have references, people that you have worked, that you have experience in the work that you want to do. I needed a lot of financial support and um, this, was, this is like really, it was such a blessing that my country has um, uh, this uh, supporting system now. It's, it, it just started a few years ago in which they want to increase the number of, of, um, of uh, students on the grad level in the sciences. And so they give these gifts, like these type of scholarships that, um, that allow us as uh, Colombians um, to come into, and they actually, for, they, they actually want people to come to um, countries like the U.S. There are many areas that it could be working on. I think there is one very important one that is growing up, that is understanding um, how much biodiversity we have uh, in, the, in the planet. It's being able to understand about systems, how systems in biology, human and interactions with other species work. And so this is probably basic science, more research science, understanding what we have, knowing what we have. There are so many issues that we have no idea how they work. Um, and so there is also another area which is, in, which is growing which is the management of natural resources because due to uh, poor management so far that we have had um, in the past of our natural resources we're getting uh, we're losing these uh, uh, resources uh, forest biodiversity like I've been invited to attend conferences to go and speak just because of what I know I get the chance to travel a lot um, I and in terms of the, my study so increasing or growing in my career 
Yeah, there have been um, impacts um, um, from being outside of home, from being in another country. Um, one of the main ones is trying to, you know, to immerse or trying to be with people that are it's very different from you, especially in the language. So it does take takes time to um, adjust to the new this new way of, of like interacting with others. Um, there are differences in culture, and uh, these kind of barriers you need to really put away in order to. Um, to get uh, along with these new um, new collaborators and new people you interact, new friends. I'll certainly recommend biology as a career. Um, uh, any area in the biological sciences has a lot of potential. Um, there is a profit out of it. I highly recommend it because of the opportunities and kind of stuff that you can do. It's a very versatile uh, type of career. You can do many things at the same time. I get the chance to be in the lab. I get the chance to be in the field, outside in nature. I get the chance to work in a computer. I think there are a lot of possibilities for someone who is creative. We are in need of professionals due to the condition of degradation of our the environment. There is a lot of potential for people who want to do new things, who wants to um, mix knowledge with applied sciences, technology. So I, I highly encourage people, young people, to go into the biological sciences for careers. Subjects like ecology, botany, genetics, or anatomy are the tools that Carolina uses every day to track the origins of living beings, their conservation, and their relationship with the environment. The possibilities in this profession are endless, especially for those who love nature. We invite you to visit our website where you can find a lot of information about STEM careers, universities, and much more. When we return, we will meet a student of medicine who never stops studying other disciplines to complement her career. We are now going to touch on another branch of the STEM family, which deals with the study of life, health, and illnesses. As you can imagine, I'm talking about medicine. Medicine is very important in our lives. Let me give you a little bit of information about how medicine has changed how we live. Around the year 1900, life expectancy was around 30 years. Nowadays, it's more than 70 thanks to advances in medicine. Let's meet a young student in San Antonio, Texas, whose dream is to welcome children into this world. My name is Amy Baez. I am studying at the STEM Medical Care School, and I want to be an obstetrician to um, help bring children into the world. For me, ever since I was a little girl, I just loved science because it's something that's reaching people all around the world. I'm already in college, two years ahead of my friends that are just graduating from high school right now, and that is going to help me a lot because at the college where I want to become an obstetrician, I will need about 12 to 16 years of school. So with this program, I'm already getting a head start on my schooling. Just this last semester, we were focusing on classes in biology, mathematics, and engineering. But this semester, we started to interact more with the school. Here we keep some fish that feed on the mosquitoes that can transmit the Zika virus. Water like this is stagnant, and mosquitoes really like that, so the mosquitoes come and lay their eggs there, and these fish can eat those eggs and that's what we are observing right now. We're trying to figure out how we can use this to help the community. What I really like the most about this place is how motivated everyone can be to be at this school, to keep going and to keep pushing forward. Even if one person wants to leave because they feel like they can't make it, we're right there helping them and telling them, yes, you can, you can, just keep going and don't give up. The university that I want to go to, I have two right now that I'm thinking of going to. It's uh, Trinity University or Harvard, ha Harvard University. The steps that I plan to take are, I need to look for scholarships. And at this school, well, I heard you can get scholarships. And I've already been in this program for two years. First, I had helped out my brother, and well, now I'm here as well. 
We had this dream ever since we were little kids that we would open up this huge hospital and my sister would be in her department with the babies, my brother would be working over here as a surgeon and my other sister, you know, as a general doctor and we would help out anyone that would come into the hospital. And me, well, I always wanted to be a dentist, you know, like my cousin. That is the dream that we always had, that we would all work together in this huge hospital. We got here to San Antonio, Texas about 24 years ago and all of our six children were born here. Since they were really little, me and my husband, we have been very involved with their education and uh, trying to keep them motivated with everything that they're doing in their lives. We've always been there for them when they needed us, helping them and encouraging them in any way that we can. Always telling them to never give up, to keep working hard, that everything will be okay in the end. For all the opportunities and programs that have come our way, we're there. We apply immediately and uh, I'm there. I always push them because I know it'll give them a better future. And for all those programs that they were successful in, they've received multiple diplomas, recognizing all of their efforts. Well, she loved to ride her bike and uh, read. She actually, since she was a child, she really loved to read all the time. For us, our children's education is very important, even from a young age, because we know that all their accomplishments and efforts that they do today will give them a better life tomorrow. Times have changed, and it's not enough to study the body's functions or how it reacts to illnesses or medicines. In order to be an integral professional in any branch of science, we have to do as Amy, study math, computers, and any other subject that can complement our profession. When we return, we will meet a Hispanic doctor who doesn't stop in her quest to help other people. On our next segment, we are going to meet a Cuban doctor who had to overcome a lot of obstacles in order to get her degree. Today, she is a proud pediatrician. Daisy Dodd shares with us her story about her determination to be a doctor and how this idea came up when she was just a girl. She had a lot of setbacks, but her determination was stronger than the obstacles she had to face. Let's watch her story and her message about resilience and determination. Medicine has changed my life because it has given me the opportunity to do something, you know what I mean, something that comes to me naturally and that I get to help others. I was born in Cuba. My parents brought me here when I was little. My mom said that ever since I was little, I would say that I wanted to be a doctor. I don't know where the inspiration came from, but I wanted to be a doctor and go to a small place and help people that were in very small towns. That's what I would tell her. And we are here today and we're going to be taking care of you. We're going to be going into this room. One of the satisfactions I get is not just from helping patients here, but also when I go abroad. I do missionary work. I go to Africa. I go to Vietnam. I go to Morocco. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Subjects that the other classmates thought were difficult for women weren't difficult for me. Uh, classes related to health, about, about chemistry, about microbiology, they attracted me. They were fascinating. It was something that I liked, you know? It was something that I didn't have to put a lot of effort into. It was easy to do something innate for me. When I tried applying to medical school, uh, definitely for me being a woman, being a minority, uh, uh, the odds were against me, you know? It's not like today, because today, that would be something that you could use in your favor. Anyway, in one of the college interviews I had, the man interviewing me said, uh, he said to me, why would I give you a spot if tomorrow you are probably going to be barefoot and you will be pregnant? So rude, right? And I said, I am determined to be a pretty good doctor, and I'm going to do it. And I can thank my parents who supported me, that helped me, because there were moments that I would say, well, if the world is against me, if they have any doubts, then it doesn't matter how smart I actually am. No, it's not about how smart you are. It's about how you present yourself. But it did have to do with the fact that I wasn't white or a man. You see, anyway, there were women in our medical program that graduated, so it was a great achievement. So one of the things that I want to say to young people today is that it can be done. And normally I would say that the sky is the limit. It doesn't matter if you're a woman, if you're a man, 
that you're white, if you're black, if you're Chinese. If you have the dedication and you want to do it, you can do it. For now, I'll probably go ahead in just a few minutes and I'll examine you then. And a medical career isn't easy to study for. You see, there are certain subjects, uh, as I was saying, math, it came very easily to me. You know, there are other subjects like English and like grammar. <laughs> that was very difficult for me. But you see, but either way, I did my best. One of the things that medicine requires, even if you study long hours, you still, even though I'm a doctor now, you still have to keep studying. But you have to have the desire to study, to want to dedicate yourself to it. Use your time, you know, to be able to achieve what you want. Today in this age, I think that there are two fields that are important to explore. The first, the scientific field. The other is computers. You see, these are the fields that have a lot of opportunities. Within the field of science, you can be a professor, you can be a doctor, you can also be a registered nurse, you can be a lab technician. So this is a field that's very, very vast. It really just depends on your dedication. One of the things that I say, especially in medicine, is that you give a lot and you receive little in return. It's something that you have to, to like. It's not a career that you take up so that, so that you can say, you know, I have a title, I'm a doctor. My parents help me. My husband as well helps me with the children. Uh, sometimes it's a little, it's a little difficult, especially for us women. Uh, children always when you come home the kids even though a dad may be on the couch and can help them the kids want their mom to help them with their homework they want their mom to be the one to sit down with them and and to cook dinner for them you have to have the desire to want to help others it's not a career that uh, uh i'm involved in just because they pay me very well no that would defeat the purpose it has to be something in which you give a little of yourself offer it to everyone else and to be able to help them. In other words, the desire to want to help your neighbor. As you could see, Daisy's natural desire for service led her to help people in other parts of the world. Her final advice is very valuable. Medicine is a vocational career. It is important to love the idea to help others in order to become good doctors. We remind you to visit our website where you will find information on different STEM careers and tools to make decisions on what career to choose, how to apply for scholarships, and much more. When we return, we will talk with another doctor whose specialization has to do with physics and the way we move. In this segment, we will meet a doctor of Mexican origin who never imagined she would end up working in health sciences. In fact, she didn't even like science. Elizabeth Duenas' story is one of those where we can see how life makes some wide turns sometimes. And if we follow our instincts, we may end up achieving a lot more than we have planned. Elizabeth studied kinesiology, a branch of medicine that deals with human movement based on the principles of physics. Let's see Elizabeth's story and her inspiring work. I was born in Gardena, California. My parents are Mexican immigrants, and our home education was always greatly valued. That was very important in our family. Back in eighth grade, I had a science teacher, Mr. Nosaki, that really helped me find a love for reading. To be honest, I didn't like science a lot. I failed a test. And we had a conference with my teacher, and he said, Elizabeth's problem is that she's not reading the science textbook. At that point, I started reading more and got really interested in science, particularly the science of the human body. My dad was the only one working in my family, and he never got a higher education, but they said, God will provide and somehow we will support your dream of becoming a doctor. Looks good. When I, I attended high school, I already knew that I wanted to study medicine. And so instead of lunch and of um, uh, having lunch with my friends, I would go to the library and look for books about medicine. 
I went to UCLA. There I studied kinesiology, the science of movement. I had the opportunity to study anatomy and physiology, which reinforced my desire to study medicine. I think everyone has the capacity to pursue a career in science. What really makes a difference is to have people in our lives, for example, teachers that support you. But it's also important to ask questions. When you struggle with something, ask for help. I think in our culture, sometimes we shy away from asking for help. Young people should really look into careers in science. There are a lot of employment opportunities in this field. Even though technology keeps advancing, we are always going to need doctors. Technology is an important part of medicine in our daily lives. Actually, all our patient records are digital now. We can consult with patients over the phone. We can do a video consultation. We can refill a patient's prescription using their smartphone or, or, or online. It takes a lot of sacrifice and hard work to study medicine. It takes long hours of study, and once you are working at a hospital, there will be shifts for 36 hours at a time, without sleep sometimes. It's a career with great sacrifice, but at the same time, one that brings great satisfaction. One of the satisfactions of this career is um, the gratitude you get from patients. This, for example, was made by one of my patients. I've assisted on a birth, helping bring a new life to the world. I've removed a cancerous tumor that saved the life of a patient. But when you have passion for what you do, you could easily work 100 hours a week and still feel fulfilled and content because you've made a difference in the life of another person. What do you think about Elizabeth's career? Kinesiology helps patients recover the ability to move while letting the body find the balance as it heals itself. As you can see, there are no limits in the world of science. On our website, you will be able to find a lot of information and links related to STEM careers, financial aid, and other resources. Well, we've come to the end of our show. I hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time on Generation STEM.